हाँ बताओ क्या है भाई एलिगरी क्या है प्लेटो से नीचे भी आ सकते हो ऐसा बात नहीं है सो देन एलिगरी वुड बी दैट सम थिंग्स शोन बट देन देयर सम डिपोर्ट टू इट एज वेल समथिंग मोर इन लाइफ के ऊपर मैटर्स को देयर समथिंग इज देयर एंड समथिंग बी हाइन देयर और लाइक इन बिटवीन द लाइंस that's true it's more like a metaphor ha uh, in the sense that we have to decode it so i also had a doubt so the, the uh, lo- logistics and ju- just in time pro- pro- production are they the same thing okay you know well not really same but they kind of uh, this thing you know they kind of uh, come together um they kind of come together they 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 mingle you know the okay. yeah yeah there is a convergence there Okay. Huh. Anyone thought of this just in time production? Like uh, any anyone thought about this? Like uh, saw it happening? Sir, so the production system in seventy, sixty, seventies in ships when they used to assemble things in the ships. No, can you give an example? Anybody has encountered this in one's life? सर वो जो मुड़ी मुड़ी वाला लोग सामान लेके घूमता एंड ही स्टॉप्स एट एवरी हाउस एंड प्रिपेयर्स इट एंड गिव इट गिव्स इट टू देम हां क्या सामान देता है वो सर वो मुड़ी चार्ट एंड ऑल दैट जो वो लेके यस सर हां हां दैट्स राइट इट्स द सेम प्रिंसिपल यस द झाल मुड़ी वाला the jalmudi and uh, wo chaat and chaat masala yeah <laughs> that's right wo this the principle is the same but i'll give you an example i recently you know faced with so i was talking to someone you know we recently brought out something you know published something so um, and then he said you know this is a new publishing house and and what they do is that if you want to buy any book then you have to just tell them it's after you place the order then they print it then they produce it and then they send it i said what then i said oh okay so they they do that they they so because so because if you go on amazon you're buying a book you know you would think oh that book already exists somewhere in some warehouse right that's what you imagine and then so because it's showing it's already available it's in stock what do they write in stock but that is a misleading term it's not in stock there's no stock stock means like something which is already there it exists in the drawer it exists in the almira ki ghar mein chini hai chini ke dabba mein chini hai stock hai <laughs> lekin nahi hai <laughs> jaise aapko chini dalna hai chai mein turant wo aa jata hai usse pehle nahi nahi rakhna hai ekdam it's a very highly dynamic agile <laughs> um uh, diy post modern kitchen you know nothing is in stock But the moment you want anything, it's right there <laughs> at that time. So the he said, okay, but you will, uh, you will, uh, you you order it, but they print it, you know, because this guy he he knew the publishers, you know, and he knew how at the he knew the production side of things. Otherwise, I would have just ordered it, and the book would come, and then I would say, okay, I would think that things are still happening in the old way, but it's not. And then when this friend told me. then i actually realized that i have bought books on amazon before where i did get some sense ki ye the print quality and all no it felt like ki ye jaldi jaldi karke bheja pata nahi kyun mujhe laga either the ink was smelling i had the fresh ink smell or something i had smelled something fishy earlier but i didn't i couldn't uh, place my finger on it right so if you look around maybe you guys are buying things that are just in time uh, production okay and and it's happening with uh with uh, with automobile industry in automobile industry and you will see you know when the farmers protest are happening if you actually closely follow don't read the, all this news about bjp and congress and uh, you know all these uh, very kind of ideologically driven news if you look at on the ground things are happening how company people are say adjusting when there is a strike and you will see they say that look our production is just in time so it's not like say if they are to um say if there is a strike around gurgaon if there is a strike around uh manasar they do not have a stock 
of spare parts that they can still put into the cars so that car uh, production will continue for at least say another a week or week or so even after the production you know um yeah so th that's why there's a waiting list for for uh, for cars because they do not want any stock they do not want to have warehouses they still have warehouses that's a different thing but if you look at the way capital has organized itself today then you will see the <clears throat> the the where it's all headed is towards this kind of a uh, just in time production now gauri where logistics comes is that if you want to do just in time production then you have to be really good at your logistics if you do not want to keep anything stock in your kitchen you do not want chawal atta nothing though there is a family an imaginary family imagine you know who is like a super postmodern post structuralist family right <laughs> they said that we let our guests come we will not keep anything we believe in just in time production then you say okay then you will tell your father you know okay you do this just in time production you will tell your mother you do this just in time production in the family <laughs> you know we will not have atta from before we will not have chawal from before we will have nothing in stock in the kitchen what in that case you really need to work on your logistics how will you make sure that just as we need that thing will arrive on time right so you need logistics do you have a little fellow in the in the house who will immediately quickly go cycle mein chad ke ja ke turant neighborhood store se leke aayega jab bhi jo bhi chahiye samman do you have that guy like that <laughs> you see uh of course you will say i have this wiggy i have this i have that so your logistics have to be good so what is happening is that because of just in time production in which all most manufacturing is going in that direction so they don't want to keep anything in stock uh, spare parts stock mein nahi rakhenge after the car is uh, produced they will not put it in a factory as soon as it is produced it has to immediately go to the retail store and the final customer must immediately get it and that's also by the way with the farmers protest you know when you're talking about uh, these laws these farm laws and we talk about contract farming what is contract farming contract farming is also just in time production that means the from the farm till the what do they call it the the dining table you know from the farm to the dining table the fork and spoon so that time has to be really uh breezed earlier what do you do or earlier or what is actually still going on is that you have the farm and then there is this msp and then they will go into the stock and then they will go into the fci go down this that right kar kar ke kar kar ke after so many stoppages so many mediation so many other other things um finally it arrives at the customer the contract farming so if mcdonalds is in india mcdonalds will uh, directly go and do contract with the farmers and will say that we need this much of wheat because they want to make uh, bread and all that for their um, donuts and uh, for their kya bolte wo burger ha for the burgers and all so what they can do is that if say the wheat is being grown in madhya pradesh farmers and then they have to supply the 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 mcdonald's outlets in delhi then as soon as the wheat is harvested it's already there in delhi you know the trucks will just come that means <clears throat> again no stock from before no storage from before you know so it's like a constant circulation right uh, and that's how also they cut in costs so no uh, go down costs no storage costs and if you store then you need to do freezing cold storage this that so there has to be on you have to be on a constant loop the hyperloop is the hyperloop of uh, who is that guy that hyperloop of the this guy you know the elon musk kind of a thing that hyperloop is in that sense also a metaphor uh, now as you can see we are looking at uh, systems that are unrepresentable in that other machinic sense but also it's unrepresentable in the sense of the the 
the increased velocity and speed of circulation, you know, because of logistical capitalism, because of just-in-time production, um, and all of that. So no wonder the richest man in the world the, today is uh, precisely making his money out of the just-in-time production. Logistics, it's Amazon, doesn't produce anything, but only connects, uh, aggregates, uh, and networks. Could be Jack Ma, you know, right? The Chinese guy uh, who has Alibaba. That's where the major chunk of so-called wealth creation uh, is taking place. But that's where you will see that unrepresentability. So if it is unrepresentable, then what happens? What happens to narrative? You know, what happens to narrative? Like, how can you, how can you, how, how will you tell what is going on? How will you tell what's happening? You cannot tell. Because you can only skim the surface, you know, because one, either there is deep learning and machines and algorithms and all that, you do not exactly know how it all works out, right? Uh, how is it, how it is internally configured? It's like trying to figure out how uh, uh, the, the, it's like trying to figure out uh, um, someone's mind, you know, <laughs> right? It's a very tough task <laughs> to try to figure out someone's mind. You can only hear that person speak and you can only tell that person, ask that person, what do you think about this, that, and the other, but how exactly uh, it kind of uh, processes in the mind, you do not know that. So one is that, the other is uh, because of um, the importance uh, that uh, you have for logistics, for just-in-time production, which means circulation and distribution. Um, that's where the scene is. Aggregating things, networking things, you know, or if you take an even more um, uh, clearer uh, example of Facebook and all of this, you do not know how they are making money, right? Because they're not producing anything. Uh, they're just like, um, you know, uh, uh, facilitating apparently communication between humans. <laughs> What can be more innocent than that, you know? It's like they're, they're, they're just giving you, um, it's like language, you know? Language with which you communicate with each other. Uh, and so it's just a tool of communication. So, and yet, um, that's where the money is. You know, that's where the, the so-called value creation is. So because of all these reasons, I mean, you know, when there is, say, mining, let me push this point a little bit, bit more. When so there's mining, okay, Niamgiri Hills, Tribals, Adivasis are being displaced by mines. That's so clear, right? That's very clear. Usme to dikkati nahi hai na. Koi dikkati usme. It's very nice and. How? You know, a, a, a very good Samaritan NGO and put all this nice pictures, a lot of uh, PDF and all the old guided model of development. And so, people, right? Those are all research and table. Can you see that? That's table. Yeah, so you're not audible. Uh, yeah, so so all of that is investment, the defense, prices are going up. Even there, you will see, you know, like you will hear so many different people. But you can. Well, now, but it's, uh, that's how this is, you know, everything you put on ideological thing, it is bad, that's why it's happening. Then you say, no, but BJP, this is to happen. 
तेजी से नो 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 यू नो होता था बट पड़ेगा छोड़ दो उसको राइट सो यू पुट एवरीथिंग ऑन पॉलिटिक्स एंड आइडियोलॉजी यू नो आई मीन पॉलिटिक्स इन दैट बैड सेंस लाइक लॉजिक बिकॉज़ यू आर नॉट ए रियली नो यू डू नो हाउ आई डू नॉट नो ओके डू वी डू वी नो हाउ पेट्रोल प्राइसेस गेट्स फिक्स्ड इन द इंटरनेशनल मार्केट्स बिकॉज़ इवन देयर इफ यू गो नाउ लुक एट दिस इवन देयर यू विल सी financial markets derivatives markets speculation it's crazy you know i don't think we can really follow that um, anybody can really understand that uh did you guys follow this uh, gamestop thing recently yes, yes sir i read about it yeah. it's crazy right Yeah, it was pretty fascinating. So, you know, some sometimes people these days tell me, "Oh, why why don't you write about some of these things?" So, farmers movement पे लिखा, games पे पे मैं बोला क्या लिखूँगा? समझ भी आए तब तो लिखेंगे भाई. It's unrepresentable. Let's accept it. So, but uh, can... like you're talking about, like you were talking about Google and Australia. Uh. So even in Australia, they're saying that um. Facebook should pay news and media companies. That's right. That's right. Yeah. For the content yeah. so then... That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So but then you Facebook know how many actually... people? Yeah, that's yeah. right. You know, but then, but then the unrepresentability part again comes because, um, as in unrepresentability as well as maybe I don't know what's the word. Maybe indeterminacy. You know, like not determinate, indeterminacy. that comes because then you say okay but how we, how how much should they pay what will be the rates you know right the actual figures when you say ki theek hai says there some australian news uh, portal or news magazine unka dikhaya uh, i don't know you know do ghante ke liye kisi uh, google search user ne uh, falna australian news channel ka uh, content uh, 10 minute ke liye dekha kitna hoga bhai uska rate now if you actually want to see how those rates are determined again you will see you know you enter into that zone which i think there are again machines and all that i don't know how to determine all that you know um, um but like say there was a there was a there was some um, people some really cutting edge activists you know who once said that facebook should pay their users so if you are facebook user because facebook apparently is giving you a free service uh, you, anybody can freely use facebook they said but because facebook actually makes money uh, the more time i spend on spend on facebook the more money it makes one way or the other um so facebook should pay their users because uh, facebook users are actually on wage labor you know for facebook so you are actually working for facebook and you don't even realize it so you are unwise labor but now <laughs> we have realized it <laughs> that facebook is making money out of us so we are unwise labor so they have to pay now that calculation if at all that has to happen i think there are some people try to i don't know if they ever went to court uh, saying facebook should pay their users but some of them tried then how will you again or calculate that you know so if i use say i'm a heavy user imagine i use facebook for 5 hours per day you know for like 2 uh, years i've done that how much mera kitna banta hai ab ye jo calculation hai right so what you see then is that um there is that domain um of um that kind of a opacity you know uh, something is impervious there you know so we see that saw that with the game stop um there's a big news and how all these small small users on reddit on reddit uh, i don't know what they did and they just ganged up or something and then all the big corporations they were like okay you know the big hedge fund funds this thing so um uh, but then you can take ideological positions there you know it's very easy to take ideological positions there so you will say if you are slightly on the left then you are with the redditors you are with games uh, you know the the guys who challenge all the big hedge funds right so you had i think this article i don't know somebody said it came out maybe it was the washington post or something which was um you know against these redditors you know and which sided with the big hedge funds 
because at the end of the day, Washington Post, New York Times are extremely reactionary, uh, you know, publications. They are against Trump, but by opposing Trump, they hide their own reactionary politics, you know. So in this GameStop uh, affair, it was very clear where they stand on this question, you know, um, right? So, um, so what you see then is, um, is, is, is when you cannot then analytically uh, analytically um, say um, when you cannot analytically um, represent something when you cannot like say with the case of a uh, Vedanta mining company uh, displacing uh, tribals in Niamgiri it's very clear you know you can actually show uh, it in action you can actually show the videos of houses being destroyed and poor people coming on the roadside and all of that. That is very representable. But when it is not representable, when it is unrepresentable, I mean the same thing, you know, it could be the same kind of oppression at work, same kind of marauding capital, um, right? Uh, when you cannot do that, then you say, okay, allegory, metaphor. Metaphorically, now you can describe it, but you cannot really uh, present it. It's unrepresentable. So it's easy for me to say Vedanta Mining Corporation exploited and destroyed the lives of Adivasis in Yamu. But it's very difficult for me to say that Amazon or Uber, um, you know, um, is exploiting people, you know, unless I resort to this that, oh, look how Uber is uh, refused to pay the driver something or Amazon mistreated its delivery boys, right? Um, that is a subsidiary thing because. Amazon can always pay them enough. Where you have to catch is where Amazon is, is showing its strength in, say, in delivering things, bringing, you know, goods from afar and making it easy for people to shop. That's where the exploitation is taking place, right? It's not like uh, in the way they are mistreating some people on the side. No, you have to be able to, if you are critiquing something, then you have to critique where its strength lies, you know, not where there are some loopholes in its overall activity. You have to critique its USP, its unique selling proposition. You have to critique its main work, you know. And at that level, so if say if you're critiquing, say, Facebook, it's not like, oh, because Facebook went with uh, Modi, uh, because Facebook, uh, you know, um, uh, sided with some... Uh, uh, some uh, right wingers, no, that they can always do tomorrow side with left wingers, if you know, right? And they have done it also in many places. They have gone against Trump, for example, you know, um, uh, against the right wing, and then maybe sided with the Democratic Party uh, and all of that. But that is just a position, you know. Uh, alliances, those alliances can always shift, right? Um, um, you can change your friends. But you are looking at its core work of actual allowing the communication at that level. Where is the uh, what is what is wrong there? You know, at that level, what is going on? And that's where I was telling you. Uh, some people said that Facebook has to pay the users. It's at that level we are talking about the unrepresentability uh, of say oppression. You know. Um, Right, because at the level of Amazon not paying his delivery boys, that is like a, a NGO kind of a thing, you know. Okay, you know they should pay, uh, they should do, you know, keep everyone happy. Or that of course, Amazon can always do that if they want. He's the world's richest man, you know. They will, they can pay everyone very well. <laughs> um, so, so at so 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 now you know at what level we are talking about the unrepresentability and because of the unrepresentability um, you have this thing about and that's where the metaphor comes that's where now 
um, as a response to this or out of desperation <laughs> because you uh, cannot use another language now. So you will use metaphors. Uh, you know, in very oppressive regimes where you cannot directly oppose the regime, then you resort to songs or something, no? Right? Indirectly, you will just sing, we shall overcome. <laughs> Some people do that, right? <laughs> um, just sing, we shall overcome. Then he will say, no, no, why are we singing? We shall overcome. Ye kya hai? It's not general bath. We shall overcome. Ye to, it's always true in any situation. We shall overcome. There's always something to overcome. You know, even if you are in any relationship, if you are in love or something, you will say, oh, yes, we shall overcome. <laughs> right? Then he say, no, 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 no. But this is a metaphorical thing. It actually has a lot of power and it really um, allows people to, uh, to, 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 to be confident and really take on the this oppressive regime and all of that, right? So that's a, so, so the we shall overcome is like a, like a universal metaphor kind of a thing. Uh, it's a bit like that, you know, right? Because you cannot really pinpoint anything particular about the regime, which is very repressive and which will immediately attack back or something. It's a bit like that, right? So you then resort to metaphors. So I'll just <clears throat> stop here by giving one example, like say, there are metaphors, say, in movies. Um, say the people talk about, say, Spider-Man movies, you know, or some movie in which there is a big hero, uh, you know, who will deliver us from injustice. Uh, I do not know Bollywood movies, but there are a lot of... Can you hear my voice? Okay. Okay. So, um, what is that, uh, you know, in this part? I was referring to Spider-Man. Did you hear that part? Okay. So, I was saying, um, maybe Anshuman, there's some problem at your end. Others could hear, you know, without any disturbance. No, sir. E even we, we couldn't hear, hear you. Okay. Uh, yes. But I was, uh... There was a lot of cracking in between and we couldn't hear at all. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, so what was that uh, other character, you know? Sp Spider-Man tries to save these ordinary people. There's some other fellow who keeps attacking ordinary people. Green Goblin. Is that Goblin? Yeah. Okay, the Goblin. G O B L I N. Goblin. This one? Okay, so it's a Goblin. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, um, I think it was some. It was some. Iron Man is different, right? Iron Man, I thought it was uh, some class between the two. Uh, oh, yes, there's this, um, there's this, uh, um, this, uh, uh, where there's this conversation in front of the mirror where that guy who is uh, having to battle it out with Spider-Man, um, that guy talks to himself, no? Looking into the mirror. Yes, this is Goblin. So oh, that's goblin. Oh my god, that's yeah. have you guys seen that? Yeah. Yeah. Gori, have you watched Spider-Man? 
sir. Yes, yes. So I initially I thought it was this other villain called the Riddler mm. who talked in terms of in a very confusing manner or something. Uh, Jim Carrey played that role. That's what I remember. Jim Carrey. What is uh, the character's name? Mr. Riddler. R I D L E L E R. Uh, oh, Riddler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> So, since yeah. we were talking about metaphors, I thought it was that. Okay, okay, okay. No, it could be that also, you know. But that mirror conversation is, I think, goblin, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah, Sukanya, do you have you watched this one, the goblin scene in Spider Man? It's a very powerful. Oh no, scene. so I haven't. Yeah, I haven't yeah. seen Spider Man. Well, you must. You must. Uh, you know because. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you must. And this goblin scene, you know, most people, I mean, I also used to watch, I mean, the Spider-Man movies for a long time. But I also always used to focus on Spider-Man. The he- Of course, you know, all over, I mean, at least I do, I focus on the hero <laughs> and the heroine and all that. But, and then the villain. <laughs> uh, but in this case, it's only recently I again watched it, you know, one of the lockdown things I could do. And that's when I realized that the goblin scene where the fellow... Uh, talks to himself, looking into the mirror. That's a very powerful scene, you know. Um, um, so, yeah. Okay, so what I was saying was, so Spider-Man, okay, so what? one of the things we have to ask is, why are there so many these kind of hero, or it could be heroine also, uh, <clears throat> movies? You know, the savior. Someone will come and save us. Right? There are many movies like that. Um, um, right? Uh, can we name some of them? And you will see what we mean by allegory. So this Spider Man, and then what is Batman? Right? Batman is also yeah. like that. Is the Batman also yeah, savior? Yeah, Riddler is Batman. Huh? Riddler is for Batman. Uh, Batman Berlin. Ah, okay. Riddler. Okay, we stand corrected there. Gauri and Anshuman and myself. Satish is our guy. Satish is our guy. I can see that. Satish, what are the other films? Spider Man, <laughs> Batman. Um, okay, what for V for Vendetta? So you're inaudible again. What's happened to my... Oh, no, no, it's working. Yes. <laughs> okay, no, I think there's some... My, this thing. Hunger Games? Anybody watch Hunger Games here? Yes, sir. So, but Hunger Games doesn't have a that kind of a... Uh, it's know. different. Yeah, it's different... Um, then but there is Harry Potter count. Acha, I'm not so familiar with the Harry Potter this thing, but is there a? I think there's a hero, no? Gandalf no. or someone. <laughs> no, no, there's Harry Potter. That? Harry Potter himself. Yeah. Potter talk savior? himself. Harry Potter talk himself in front of a mirror, or uh-huh. there's a skin. Okay. Harry Potter thing has. It's a very strong uh, good versus evil wala theme. Uh, so, so this Harry Potter is a savior. He, he will save the world. He will save humanity. It's. Yeah. I think. Uh, I think in the movies it's very Harry Potter centric, but in the books it's a little more diffused. Okay. There are a lot of people helping him. Okay. Um, okay, what about the Lord of the Ring kind of thing? There is a there is a hero there, the savior. I haven't seen or read it. Um, what are the there's, there's so many. Um, 
Um, in Lord of the Ring, uh, there is a billion golem. He talks himself. Ah, uh, my precious. <laughs> Uh-huh. My precious kind of dialogue yeah, the, with the ring golem. Golem. Write yeah. it down. How does it write it? Golem. That's the golem is the villain or is the is the hero? Um and then of course you know in bollywood movies it is um there's a lot of heroes all the time heroes and maybe not so much in the new kind of new wave movies uh, but uh, but still i think all these this ones that came you know the based on the historical this thing what was that those bahubali and all no bahubali uh So, but I think Hollywood does have a lot of, I mean, if we move beyond the superhero genre, uh, like they do have a lot of um, like US will save the world kind of movies. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Like Armageddon was one film where like, like I remember that there's going to be like a meteor strike and like, of course, it's the US that's going to save the world. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a. I mean, even like say that. Even if you take, uh, you know, even um, this Forrest Gump or um, any of these movies, uh, the U.S. of course is going to save the world. <laughs> you know. Um, so, but within that, there will be a, usually a hero. You know. Um, I used to watch a lot of these uh, r- r- um, the Rambo films earlier, you know, uh, the Rambo films. The Rambo quality is also that, you know, the Rambo. It's a there's a hero and he's going to save. Um, so now you have all this Bahubali and I don't know a lot of these other movies. Um, that's also about uh, uh, about saving uh, this thing. So these are uh, these always a. Uh, there's always a um, an individual, you know. There's always a character like that um, who will defend um, all of humanity from the evil forces. And this is a theme that gets repeated again and again. And uh, and nobody seems to be. I mean, you can say that you are tired of it, uh, but that doesn't really matter, you know. I mean, <laughs> uh, it gets repeated again and again. Uh, so, I mean, even otherwise, you know, you have global icons. So you will say Che Guevara or Bhagat Singh, right? Um, that's, uh, I mean, these are also icons, you know, these are also figures because when uh, Bhagat Singh was alive, he was not really lionized like this by the left, you know. Um, what Do you guys know what was the position of the Communist Party? On Bhagat Singh when Bhagat Singh was alive. Do you guys know what was the Communist Party's assessment of Bhagat Singh when Bhagat Singh was alive? Because today uh, it feels like Bhagat Singh left and all that. No, there's an immediate this thing. Or say with Che Guevara. Do you think Che Guevara is a, is a, is something some, close to the Communist Party's? Because today it feels like a natural this thing. Eh? So, so, so what I'm trying to get at is that all these hero figures, be it on the left or the right, you know, be it like be it with America, uh, America will uh, will save us, or India will save us, or China will save us. It could be anyone, you know, uh, because India will save us is also going on, right? <laughs> Uh, or China will save us. China will. I think China will save us, though. <laughs> I'm sorry to say this. This is given such nice gadgets. Uh, you know, everybody, even the poor, can afford gadgets now, <laughs> thanks to China. <laughs> you know, uh, China has uh, 
yeah so uh, um, so so what you see is that uh, these hero figures are there you know um so now that's where you will see that um that now we love it it's at that level you know so everybody knows that nothing will change things will continue as usual but yet the the imagination that some hero or heroine some character some figure some what do people talk about these days you know some uh not mata vaishno devi yaar uh wo kya hote um all these uh, phulan devi you know um within the dalit movement now it's a phulan devi right um or or some figure like that you know or even the iconization of ambedkar bodhisattva a lot of people think of ambedkar as bodhisattva you know as prophet it's a prophet right it's prophet of ambedkar um so uh, um the messiah the messianic so if you read walter benjamin walter benjamin talks about the messianic messianic time if you look at the writings of agamben agamben is engaging with the notion of messianic time so the messiah comes the prophet comes prophet muhammad what is jesus is jesus a prophet is jesus a saint what is jesus jesus is like okay son of god let's leave it there for now so so what you see is that uh, you have okay maybe buddha is an exception the messianic element seems to be not upheld by buddhism right this hero messiah who comes in buddha no it doesn't it's not that you know that uh, story uh, that buddha tells uh, uh, ananda you know uh, buddha is about to die you guys uh, uh, no no those uh, little stories between buddha and ananda ananda is is like a helper uh, he's very close associate so ananda is always with buddha you know so buddha is very old buddha might die now in very very soon so ananda is very worried you know that uh, buddha will die and uh, we have not uh, and now what will happen to the sangha you know buddham saranam gachami bolte hai na sangham saram saranam bolte hai na the the sangha huh? the buddhist co- what is the sangha it's a not a community it's a collective right the sangha so um so he says ki what will happen to the sangha to the buddhist uh, collective uh, to the followers and all that so once buddha dies you know everyone everything will disintegrate uh, so he thinks that buddha should codify his teachings his knowledge you know so he ananda tells uh, buddha he tathagat you know you please do this and then buddha tells him that's when the story about the raft happens you know and then buddha tells him uh, that no you know i don't need to do that you guys were able to manage and then ananda doesn't is not convinced so buddha finally tells him a story that look you know you have to cross a river and uh, and then you uh, there is a raft you know like logs of wood you know all put together then you get on it and then you cross the other side so buddha says so you cross the river you use the raft to cross the river but after you have crossed ananda buddha asks ananda ananda will you now carry that raft on your shoulders on your head and will you carry it with 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 you right <laughs> and what does ananda's answer no of course not you know how can i carry the raft you know it will help to live there because the raft is only for crossing the river it's not for carrying it with you and buddha says well that's what i'm telling you you know what i have taught you 
Now you leave it and you find your own path. What I have taught you is not going to be ossified into some doctrine. You know, and then you just follow it like a formula. No. So Ananda, you let me leave this world. And allow me to pass into Nirvana. You pass into Nirvana, right? You don't attain it. Because if you attain something, it's like a positive, positively given thing. But Nirvana means like vanishing. You know, it means, it means, um, it means, uh, uh, it means, uh, uh, you know, passing away, right? Um, uh, uh, kind of a thing. So, uh, okay, why am I saying this uh, Buddha story? How did I <laughs> get here? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, can you help me <laughs> come back now? <laughs> um, uh, okay, yeah. Yes, Sorry, yeah, the, the exception. The yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so Buddhism is an exception to this Messiah rule. Unlike Jesus, unlike so many else, unlike, and then if you, you know, carry on further, then so, so no Messiah, no hero, you know, uh, in Buddhism. So, Buddhism that way is unique, it's absolutely exceptional. And if you're doing critical theory, I think you must do Buddhism. <laughs> um, <yeah. laughs> That's a little a lesson from this uh, conversation. So, um, yeah, so so what you see is that um, uh, even though there's so much, you know, um, because I have packed in so much here, you know, but if we um, focus on this, uh, on these movies, movies as in I'm focusing on popular culture, I'm focusing on popular culture today means I'm focusing on the way uh, narratives are built uh, in the world today. I'm talking about uh, these narratives uh, in the in the relationship with actual systems of production, distribution, uh, consumption uh, that are uh, unrepresentable. And I have told you in what senses it is unrepresentable um, and all of that. So. If systems are unrepresentable, if they are impervious, if you cannot really analyt analytically symbolize them, you know, uh, because they are unrepresentable, then of course you resort to metaphor, you resort to allegory, right? And that's where you see uh, allegories become extremely important. I was giving you also this example just for uh, just to make the sense clear about how. Sometimes you allegorically oppose oppressive regimes, you know. Um, have you heard of the novel called Animal Farm? Animal Farm, have you heard of it? Have you heard of George Orwell? Yes, sir. Uh, George Orwell. Orwell, Animal Farm. Yes. Yeah. Satish? Uh, yes, sir. Animal Farm, George Orwell. Uh, sir, I haven't heard. Uh, no, Satish. Anshuman? Sukanya? Yes, sir. Oh, Animal Farm and 1984, Orwell. Mm, okay, I should read uh, these ones. Uh, this also, uh, Silo, is that a name? Lana Silo? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, no. You've read Animal Farm? No, sir. I haven't read uh, about it. Uh, Puhai, Puhai? Sir, I haven't read it yet. Uh, Okay, it's a very small novel. You should all read it. Yeah. So it's called Animal Farm. It's about animals. It's about pigs and monkeys and I don't know what all dogs maybe. I don't know if the elephants. I don't remember it. I've read it uh, some time ago. What is it about? You know, it's only animals are there. You know. It's like uh, it's like you know you have the story of the of the rabbit and the 
What is that? And the tortoise? You've heard of the rabbit and the tortoise story? Yes, sir. Yes, it's about a rabbit and a tortoise. Then they say, no, it is. there is a moral to the story. <laughs> then you say, no, no. If there is a very, very mean-minded, you know, very uh, combative kid, you know, the kid will read the story and say, no, don't come to the moral part. It's just about, uh, uh, um, just about a, a crow and a peacock or a rabbit and a tortoise. What is the moral part? Don't give me morals. Because it's a moral, they say, no, they say, then the, what is the moral of the rabbit and tortoise? The moral, they say, is slow and steady wins the race, right? Yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. Did you say that? <laughs> then you say, no, but, uh, like, moral, how can you say there's a moral there? Because there's animals, you know, it's about two animals and just keep it at that level. How can you say there's a moral to that story? You heard of this uh, crow and the peacock story where the crow tries to go and uh, wear feathers, uh, the peacock feathers? No, no, I haven't. No, sir, not this one. There are no so another this... crow story. What, which is? Crow and what the stones. Stones huh? trying to drink water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> hard work. Hard work pays. <laughs> uh, hard work pays. Oh, so oh. that's important. I used to think that the crows is very clever and like no, no. Ah, creativity. Ah, yeah. okay. Ah, right. Like what happens? Like just in time drops? production, like we said. I think. Ah. <laughs> uh. there too. <laughs> So the crow drops uh, stones or something, no, in the yes, pot. Yes, yes. Uh, mm. Out of the pot and then the water level rises and then the crow gets to drink it. Okay, hard work pays. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so there are innumerable such stories, you know. Uh, I think Panchatantra stories are also like that. All about, uh, you know, animals and then... And then anybody who watched a movie called Lion King? Yes, sir. Yes. So what happens in Lion King? It's also all about animals. Okay, but but why do we watch it? You know, why why did you watch? I'm sure you liked and you watched it till the end, right, Gauri? Satish? Yes, yes. Why do why do you think you liked it? It's all about animals, it's stupid, it's not about real humans. You know, animals to kabi bath bhi nahi kar sakta. Ye kyun bekar dekha raha hai ye? Animals don't talk, right? Again, lions be talking. Uh, what is that? Uh, Zazu and uh, what are those? Uh, Mufasa. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Mufasa. <laughs> and uh, what's the other one? The little little boy, the lion? Simba. Simba. <laughs> 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 what is this? Is it fooling us? I think I think that movie has grossed such huge amounts of money. It's one of the most successful movies apparently. So you say, well, it's all about animals. Animal Farm, it's such a great novel by George Orwell. You know what it was, no? The George Orwell thing. He was, he was, he was, he was, it is, that novel is an attack on the Soviet system, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. yes it's, an, it's an attack on Soviet uh, totalitarian. Surveillance. Yeah, Soviet totalitarianism, Animal Farm. Absolutely brilliant uh, novel. It is, uh, I think, uh, it is It is a kind of novel that you write one novel like that, you get a Nobel Prize. It's that kind of, it's not like some Arundhati Roy kind of article, uh, novel, you know? Yeah. So it's all about animals, you know? Animal farm is if animals say, pigs are going here, there, <laughs> you know? 
then it's supposed to be the most brilliant uh, political take on the Soviet Union. You want to do political science? You want to do critical theory? Go read Animal Farm. What are you doing? Reading all these political scientists, all these stupid articles you're reading. You know, you got to just go and read Animal Farm. So what is what what is happening here? You know, um, what is this all indicating? What this is all indicating is that we all work through allegory. It's all allegorical. So the crow comes and throws stones into that pot of water, and then there's a moral. So there's an allegory. You understand the crow doing that. Of course, the crows never do that in the first case. <laughs> Humans have concocted that. <laughs> But we love to concoct that and we will keep concocting such things and uh, earlier generations concocted and future generations will also concoct and you can't do anything about it. <laughs> right? So you concoct it, you make the crow do that and then you say, well, there's a moral to this story. And then you will say, well, there's a moral. Why? Because we are reading it allegorically. It is not just about the crow actually just putting the stones there, but it is about hard work. Now, how did you get there from the crow doing that? You know, how did you come to this hard work business? <laughs> like, there's so many gaps there, you know, there's so many, um, so many uh, leaps <laughs> that uh, you had to take to, re to ease there. Or the rabbit and the tortoise from there to say slow and steady wins the race. You know, it's just about, and you can always say, you know, I used to always love these stories because I used to imagine a real tortoise and the real rabbit, you know, actually doing that race and the tortoise actually winning. Of course, winning is also a, a, a human thing. So you will say, okay, and there's allegory, right? So at one level, there's allegory everywhere. You know, but I mean, allegory is part of, you can say, human form, human expression. You know, so if you look at uh, Indian tales, you know, Panchatantra or anything, you know, uh, uh, you can say that um, that uh, it has been there in all civilizations, you know, maybe it's just a human thing. The first humans who sat around a fire, you know, and they narrated the story. You already have allegory there. So at one level, you can say that. But here, we are talking about something more specific when we say allegory. Yeah, or say you can say in the, for the purposes of this course, if you like. Uh, so, uh, so more specific in this sense on representability, in terms of production systems, in terms of uh, machine learning and the, some of the other things I pointed out that there is a that uh, that that there is a, uh, because of this unrepresentability there is this um, there is this uh, there's this indeterminacy um, there's just too many variables there's just too much um, you know processing uh, that is uh, going on. Um, so even though uh, in the realm of politics, as in elections and government formation, there is still a sense of agency, there's still a, a sense of, okay, the people wanted change, and then apparently there's a change, which is a new government. There you see there is representation, there is agency, um, there is, a, there is a change that people wanted, that people brought about change. You know, so there is all of that symbolism, representation, uh, change, uh, human collective uh, agency, you know, all of that is ideology, ideology, you know, uh, ideology, uh, ideology, um, you know, ideological camps, ideology in the sense here of ideological camps. Um, so, um, so all of that uh, is that is at work. 
Uh, so ideological uh, distinctions are important at that level, you know, say between in the Indian case between BJP and Congress, uh, it is important at that level. But when you come to this other level, that is not important at all. You know, it doesn't matter whether it is Modi ji or uh, whoever it was earlier, Manmohan Singh or this Rahul Gandhi or something, because contract farming, everybody is agreed on that, by the way. You know, this is all posturing opposition parties are doing. Sarad Yadav, <laughs> you know, he is the architect of contract farming. You know, <laughs> he's today in the opposition, so he's opposing it. But they all are agreed on this. Why? Because at the level of systems, at the level of actual distribution production mechanisms, you know, one is dealing with systems, no matter who comes, the left comes. What was the left front government doing in West Bengal with, in Singur and Nandigram? They were doing exactly these things, contract farming, this kind of so-called industrial <laughs> development, right? Uh, um, so that level we are talking about, um, what we see is that then uh, this failure uh, of representation um, of uh, even collective uh, human agency, you might say, means that it can only happen now. Uh, the intervention, if at all it happens, or the sense of agency can come in, in this case, only through uh, allegorical uh, figure, you know, um, of some imagined evil force against which you will either have your Batman or Spider-Man um, or you will uh, project uh, some hero or heroine, some Disharavi one day, another day Kanaya you want to save, or another day you want to save Omar Khalid, you know, these are all figures that are constantly, or maybe you also wanted to save Rihanna, I don't know, you know. So these are all generated like that, all this allegorical, you know, because they do not represent anything substantial, you know, right? I mean, Rihanna doesn't represent anything substantial. You know, I mean, she was not even in the scene, you know, but something happens, something called viral. We don't know what this viral is, you know, it just happens and takes everyone by storm. And suddenly it's like Kangana versus Rihanna or something like that. So all of this allegorical fights, you know, battles that we see today. Right? Um, now, this is something which uh, has been theorized within critical theory. Uh, this has been something which has been grasped. Uh, so I think you've not got the reading list, uh, which I sent to uh, Rekha Saxena, how within this, uh, uh, within critical theory, this thing is grasped. Of course, I have broken it down into maybe simpler elements or whatever you want to call it, uh, or taken it closer to life. Uh, so it's maybe it's clear to you, but when we read uh, uh, theoreticians trying to grasp this, you know, in a slightly more esoteric language, uh, things get uh, tough there. So we'll have some readings on this, um, uh, but this is uh, um, this is what it is. Um, so, so I pointed out some of the things. We'll cover the, these things uh, as we go along. So um, yeah, so 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 so. So that's uh, that's where the allegory comes, right? So I'll give you something to read, and then we'll uh, we'll meet again. Um, but I hope you have noted down some of the things so that you can think through uh, this and uh, so that you know what's what's going on. Um, so you have to, in this course, you have to really see, um, you know, what is going on within the lecture uh, because uh, uh, for these kind of things, the there are no cut out, there are no ready made readings, you know, that you just read and all this is there, you know. So you have to really, uh, uh, like, you know, I'm sure you guys are good, you know, you guys um, listen 
in extremely <laughs> creative ways, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, you know, again, that's the same oh. thing, that unrepresentability. <laughs> but I was, uh, but my advice would be that, yeah, I hope you, uh, you are, you do not uh, outsource, you know, uh, some of the processing part, you know, saying, oh, later when I actually get the reading there, I will, I will look at it again properly. You know, so don't do that. Don't outsource the processing for later. Sure, I have yeah, a question. Yeah. So this uh, uh, allegorical fight uh, keeps on producing or does it involve the people in a continuous process of a state of exception? Continuous process of? Continuous process of state of exception. Does this uh, allegorical uh, fight involve the people in the continuous process of state of exception? Oh, 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 oh my God, oh my God, that's a tough one. I don't know. Don't think about the state of exception and all that. Just look at like the examples that I've given you. Don't use again another concept, you know, because state of exception, you know, is again um, something else. No, it's not about the state of exception. No, don't go there. Okay, um, just think about these examples, you know, don't uh, go from book to book, concept to concept. Um, I've given you examples from actual popular culture, and I have tried to tell you that, try to think about examples from your own, this thing, like think about allegorical stories, maybe it'll help you, you know, okay. go to your childhood books, maybe get out of your childhood books, you know. Yeah, yeah, I will yeah. Read animal yeah farm. don't. Yeah, first. don't look at your other po political science literature for, for some time. Okay, uh, yeah, go and watch some of those movies. Satish, you are good with your movies, I can see, but I think you've got to, yeah, uh, you know. Yeah, Animal Farm, George Orwell one, I will read. Yeah, yeah, so, and and uh, you've seen this Lord of the Ring? Do you, do you watch it? Do yeah. you like it? Yeah, I like it. Okay, so have you seen, have you, have you, uh, have you seen this Narnia? Do you watch the Narnia movies also? The C.S. C.S. Lewis. Narnia. Yeah. Do you watch those? The Narnia Chronicles? Uh, no, you don't. You see I, the. Uh, I was a Narnia, but I, I can't remember. It it was way back. So okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, you can see the Lord of the Rings is also, and uh, as uh, as well as Harry Potter. You know, these are extremely uh, important. Uh, uh, you know, big, I mean, you know, you keep wondering why are they so popular? You know, uh, what what does it say about uh, the world we live in? Right, um, that's the kind of thing. So, uh, so if you look at the uh, Lord of the Rings, you know, there is this thing about the rings. You know, and then I think there is the uh, um, there's the Hobbit. Yeah, there's a there's a secret metal or something. No, in that 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 particular ring has something. Yeah, the uh, curse or uh, yeah. So, did you guys watch this movie called Black Panther? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. The superhero. Yeah, that, that, yeah, yeah. That, that is also yeah, that's a superhero. And that has that uh, that uh, metal that they discover, iridium or something, no? Some some crazy metal they, they discover. And the most uh, the world's strongest metal or something like that. What is that? Isn't that superman? No, it isn't Black Vibranium. Panther. Vibranium. Vibranium. Oh, yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, right, right, right. Now, what the hell, you know? Now, this is, it never happens like that, right? That you suddenly discover one metal and then suddenly, you know, entire black uh, empire will come, you know, like because it has the world's strongest um, uh, metal or something. <laughs> vibranium. You got a vibranium. <laughs> Of course, you can say, you know, Saudi Arabia got petrol, right? And then it's like, uh, right? It's all the Middle East wealth is all built on one vibranium. In this case, it's it's petrol. So you will have this. So even in maybe in the Lord of the Rings, you know, you have this uh, guy has this ring or something. 
or then there's a hidden treasure. Hidden treasure, Gauri? <clears throat> I'm not very familiar with Lord of the Rings. No, hidden treasure. You know, there's so many stories about hidden treasure. Where there's this kids, they go to find some hidden treasure. And there's a map, you know, right? In an old book. Uh -huh. uh, right? Uh, you know, like a lot of, so many movies, yeah. Just go any channel. Yeah, Jumanji, yes, Jumanji. <laughs> Gauri, you have seen Jumanji? Uh, yes, yes, I've seen Jumanji. Yeah. That's what, you know, so, you know, these things are so, what the things that I'm telling you today. So even, I think when it comes to that, the uh, comic book is were available to us. Uh, you know, which talked about Kapish and some sort of Hunter, the Mowgli stories, all, all of Mowgli. that uh, has yeah. that element. That's right, yeah, yeah. So you have innumerable, I mean, what I'm saying today, the examples are so rampant and so commonsensical that when I ask you, oh, do you know this treasure hunt kind of stories? Then of course you will say no, because nobody even asks you these things because these are so embedded in our daily life. You flip any channel on TV, it's playing. So you don't notice Jumanji. You won't think that we're going to discuss Jumanji in class, right? Um, you know, or we're going to discuss Spider-Man in class, you know. Uh, animal farm, <laughs> it's respectable to talk about uh, George Orwell, but it's not respectable to talk about, I don't know, Shole or, you know, Jumanji or something. But, uh, but that's where the scene is, you know, right? That's where the money is, if you, if you, if you, if you like. That's where, uh, where <clears throat> things are happening. Uh, or say Lion King, you know. Right, the Lion King. I don't know. Apparently, it's like uh, one of the most successful uh, movies. Um, you know, <clears throat> I mean, I mean, I'm, and I'm not even mentioning the other allegorical stories, the other lot that I <laughs> that are there. And you know, by that, right, what I mean, I'm talking about Beauty and the Beast, a story like Beauty and the Beast. Do you know how popular Beauty and the Beast story is? Can you point out one human being on earth who does not know the story of Beauty and the Beast? You know? Or those other ones. What are those? Um, that girl, you know, who was mistreated by the stepmother and she was not Cinderella. allowed to... Cinderella. Ah, Cinderella. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Those are all allegories that are going on. You know? Um, and all of us are subjected to that. All of these stories are there in our minds and we have been formed and shaped by it. You know, you might today want to disown it or something. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, but at another level, have you guys heard of this uh, this Buddha story called uh, Angulimal story? This is there in the Dalit movement. Very, very used. Angulimal story? Angulimal. You know, and and it's I think it's even Ambedkar also narrates the story. Yes, sir. I think there's someone who wears the yeah, Mal. Right, yeah. yeah. Anyway, so what I want you guys to do um, um, is that go through all these allegories around you and in you, in your life and around your life. First, just do that. No, nothing, no big readings here. And you have to make an exhaustive list and just think through this and the things that I mentioned earlier, um, uh, you know, in terms of whatever the deep learning machines, this, that production systems and the form of capital. You know, what is the form of capital? As in capital or capitalism is one thing, of course, but it constantly changes its form, you know as in the key sources of, okay, to use a more uh, commonplace language, well, where is the money coming from, right, today? And then you know the money is where, the, so if you are looking for a job or if you are making a career choice, if you're just uh, out of your plus two, then you will think, okay, where, where is the money, you know? Career kaha se banega? To bolega data scientist banna hai. Data mining mein aaj kal hai na nokri. 
बहुत नौकरी है भाई डेटा माइनिंग में यू हैव टू थिंक इन दोज वेज डोंट थिंक फ्रॉम बुक टू बुक यू नो तो ये पढ़ा तो अब स्टेट ऑफ एक्सेप्शन क्या होगा तो वहां फूको का साथ कैसे कनेक्ट है वो नहीं यू नो इन टर्म्स ऑफ बिकॉज इन दिस कोर्स वी आर डूइंग थिंग्स दैट आर नॉट ऑलरेडी देर फ्रॉम द पास्ट एंड ऑल दैट वी आर सम ऑफ दिस इज समथिंग विच इज अनफोल्डिंग इन द प्रेजेंट एज वी आर स्पीकिंग यू नो राइट सो ओपन योर आईज एंड ईयर्स एंड जस्ट यू नो डोंट टेक फॉर ग्रांटेड वट यू सी ऑन टी वी और यू here from other people you know the most uh, mainstream routine things take it you know take it like absorb it like and then see um, and then see uh, what's going on so this is then in terms of the new forms of capital uh, that we are talking about uh, so i told you about uh, logistics i told you about other thing i can't uh, go th- go over it now you have already heard it uh and i think some of this i i try to record this towards the end i will see whether the recording has any quality um then i will see then maybe i can i can share it with you guys um so uh so do that and uh um i'll give you one reading anyways um uh, um which i will um i will how do how do i send the reading i'll i'll send it to gauri and gauri will uh we'll we'll disseminate it um so i'll give you one reading anything else but uh, on allegory you know i want you guys to read a little bit about on allegory i mean you need not read it you can just like you know you can activate your <laughs> your minds and brains in that direction i mean you can just be lying in bed listening to music or whatever you know but just activate your mind in that direction because as i told you these are extremely common place things you know uh, we just uh, toyed with some examples here um but uh, um so from the next week i'll give you more proper um uh, readings um uh there's this one um uh one um book on uh, allegory uh i'll see if i can say but this is a more conventional this is like a uh, this is like a more like uh, yeah songs are allegorical of course you know but you know but there's a but there's a but there's a big debate on this allegory thing because uh there are some conservative writers who look at uh allegory in a particular way uh so like say, like say harry potter you know i mean when you when you watch harry potter uh you would wonder um you would you would wonder oh, what are these unreal things they are showing is a kabine hota hai all these strange strange creatures they show no um right um Uh, and and you think they don't even exist why is there a so much hype about this harry potter ye sab to hota hi nahi hai yaar aisa character se nahi hota hai aisa figure se nahi hota hai kya kya dikhate hain log a tree which is suddenly st- talking strange animals strange creatures a man with two horns right so um so at one level if you say all the literature students they study allegory you know um so allegory in the and say by comparing it with the metaphors so i asked recently one of my uh, friends who who teaches uh, literature english literature in du i would just <laughs> i would just uh, i would just uh, okay yeah about the lyrics in the song yeah okay yeah fine you know of course you know ghazal and all this um, you know lyrics in all the songs you can say um so um um so i was asking one of my one of my colleagues from the literature department i said you know what do you guys study in allegory because wo to padhate hai na course content pe to unhone mujhe ek suggest kiya it is just a textbook but i think it helps uh, to kind of uh, Uh, get the focus so i'll share it with you um 
it is uh so i i think we need a maybe we also need a uh need an email group uh, for this you know to so that i can also share it later and then uh so uh, gauri can you also form a form an email group uh, so that uh, you know it's yes, easy to I share the share that. the readings right so i'll send you the, yeah yeah, yeah, so yeah, so I'll send you the readings, uh, one on allegory and then the other one on this unrepresentability. Um, you know, so have a look at that. But I would say maintain your diary, you know, keep writing. So some of these things that we discussed, I want you to guys to actually not just take notes, but also add your own thing, you know, wait, because these are things we also trying to provoke our own memories. And 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 recall some of the things that we will need to recall or to to kind of really get into the subject matter uh, of this course, um, right? So do that. It's a it's a, your own self exercise. You know you have to also work on yourself, um, and that is that is very very important. So and and get uh, uh, Rekha ma'am to share the course. I don't know what is the. I thought. She was really asking me to share it with her, to give it to her. And then I thought she wants to pass it on to you. Maybe there's some system. What is the system? I think there's some system for these courses. I think they have to get passed by some committee, I think. Did you guys hear something like that? No, sir. I am not aware of anything of that sort. But That's maybe others would do something. OK, OK, OK. Uh, but have the other uh, courses uh, been displayed on uh, uh, the website or on the notice board, the other optional courses? Oh, they have given out the outlines of other optional group. OK, OK, OK. <clears throat> Outline means no, I mean, say, I'm saying all the courses that are available for you guys. Uh, have all have they all been listed by by the department? I think not yet, sir. Oh, I mean, okay. like some teachers they send it directly to the concern group to all the, the ah. student group their paper. Some oh, they haven't really said anything. Oh, yeah. that means officially all optional courses are still uh, awaiting uh, final approval. Yeah, probably. Maybe I think I think yeah that's why they cannot they cannot display it to you. They they, they cannot display it to you yeah. So I think this is all <laughs> this is all informal <laughs> then, you know because I mean you know I mean nobody will stop the courses, so it's a kind of an understanding you know that you start the thing, but what job I think there's a BRSS meeting. Wo board of Research Studies bolte hai na, ah. So, uska meeting abhi set karenge, to usme they will present all that. And once that BRSH passes it, then I think the department will display it. You know, in the meantime, I think it's just between students and teachers. Yeah. So, uh, any questions? I will stop here. Any anything? As we go, this uh, Lana Silo is that Silo? Is that's uh, name? I haven't. Uh, I, I had some problem when I enter this room, and that's why I I I, I was late uh, to join. Okay, okay. Sorry, sir, for okay. that. I have some oh, that's... Issues, technical issues. Oh, okay, okay. That's is is any one of you? Uh, I know some of you are not uh, in PhD, but is there a PhD guy also here? Yeah, nobody, no. Because some direct PhDs are also allowed, no, in the MPhil. All of you are MPhil, right? Yeah, yes, yes sir. sir. OK, OK, TK. So TK, then uh, next class, uh, again, uh, next Wednesday then? OK, sir. Yeah, and uh, yeah. Gauri, yeah, and Gauri set up the uh, email, and then I'll, no, I'll send it. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. I'll do that today itself. Yeah, yeah, and then I'll send the thing. Yes, sir. OK, then? I'll take your leave. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye. Thank you, sir. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye.
how do I leave the group? 